it's time for you to push to pray until something happens. And we are so glad you're joining us on Hope Today. I'm here with Tom Hollis and Angela Madden. And Angela, tell us about our fabulous guest that's coming up because we are going in today. <laughs> yes, we are. Prayer is a powerful weapon and we as believers know that well. But what happens when you don't see an answer or breakthrough right away? Today's guest, Judy Jacobs, is going to share the hidden key inside each of us and teach us how to unlock the power of God like never before. If you are longing for a miracle, you do not want to miss this interview. She is giving us some good strategies, guys, for the kingdom of heaven to invade earth in our situations. I think that word until is a big word, isn't it? <laughs> until is a, is a word, pray until something happens. We certainly need to do that and be about that. God takes us through these times sometimes, but he wants us to continue in prayer. By the way, if you need prayer today, we have prayer partners as always standing by. You can call them right now, get a hold of someone in prayer. You can call them 24 seven to get someone. You can call them right now, get a hold of someone in prayer, in faith, and pray until something happens. You know, that's like one of my favorite topics is prayer. You know, I come from a family of prayer warriors, even in my church, I'm just as an intercessory prayer. It is so important. I think a lot of times, you know, Angela, that we talk about prayer and we sit and there's certain things that we might be like, oh God, thank you for this. And praising God and thanking God is important. But there's something about when you tap in into the spiritual supernatural level with prayer and you're interceding and you're warring and you're just staying in the presence of God and you're waiting on heaven and for him to respond. I mean, this is one of my favorite topics. I love talking about prayer because when you pray, when you connect with heaven, when your prayers are like incense and they hit the nostrils yes. of God and heaven comes down. I mean, we can do some damage. I'm serious for the kingdom of God. We really can. Yes. I mean, nothing comes to earth except by prayer. And so I think that today, as we dive into this topic, it's going to give us a new fuel, a new fire to our faith and get us to a place where we recognize truly God is waiting to hear our declarations so he can respond in the earth. Tom, prayer has been critical, I know, for you in your own journey. Yes, but you know, it's interesting because I'm one of those people and I'm probably not alone that man, I gotta drag myself into prayer sometimes. <laughs> and I certainly, I discipline myself. I, I have a, have a a list of things. I keep it in my Bible. I've got a little thing on my app that reminds me to pray. I mean, I've got all, uh, uh, you know, on my phone, I've got all these things because you know what? The devil can turn our minds away from prayer yes. to our own devices, our own designs, our own wisdom, our own everything. But the place of prayer is where God gets involved. It is yes. so important that I think you got to press in. So today we want you to press in to prayer and just receive what Miss Judy is going to download into us today. Absolutely. You know, like Tom said, it can be hard sometimes to pray, pray, but when our back is up against the wall, we cry out to God. What happens when you feel like you just can't pray that prayer one more time though? Today's guest, pastor, teacher, and globally recognized worship leader, Judy Jacobs, will share what she has discovered are keys to tenacity in prayer. Author of her latest book, Pray Until, The Secret to Receiving Your Miracle, Judy Jacobs, welcome to Hope Today. Good morning and hello everybody. God bless you. What an honor it is to be with you guys today. Good morning, we are so glad to have you. So without further delay, I want you to tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write this book, the testimony that is really critical to our understanding. Well, of course, my book, Pray Until, The Secret to Receiving Your Miracle was birthed through, um, through a, 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 an incredible um, situation that my husband and I went through with our daughter. Haley, who was eight years old, um, Haley had a normal life, no kind of situation in her life, nothing. Mm -hmm. But at eight years old, she was stricken with a spirit of fear um, mm -hmm. that came over her. And she, she couldn't eat, she couldn't sleep. Uh, she had thoughts of suicide. And uh, she, was, she was in a state of panic and uh, depression and very high anxiety. Now, um, my husband and I were traveling the world. She was with her caregiver, who was an amazing, beautiful young woman uh, of God that God had sent to us. And so we were all praying because we did not understand 
what had happened, except it was a spirit of fear that came to destroy Kaylee's life. All of our lives, my life, my life has, has been in a culture of prayer. My mom, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my grandparents, my mom and dad, I grew up in that culture of prayer where you go to church before you even enter the world. And uh, you start learning how to pray when you get in the world. And, and quite frankly, that's how my husband and I started raising our two girls. We have two beautiful girls, Kaylee, 25, and Erica is 23. So we started them and raised them in this culture of prayer. But at eight years old, we begin to be very, very concerned what is going on. And through prayer, we realized what had happened. There was a spirit of fear that had come to torment. The Bible says that fear is a torment. It comes to it comes to torment you. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, which means it is the enemy that has given us a spirit of fear. God has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And so we begin to speak that over Kaylee and begin to really go into battle with this spirit of fear. Hence, this book that was birthed, Pray Until. Judy, in that testimony that you shared throughout your book, what was one of the keys to seeing your daughter go from fear-filled to faith-filled? It was, it was not giving up. It was not given. I remember very specifically, Angela, where God woke me up, God got me up on a Monday morning very early and I was praying. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I want you to pray and fast. I said, okay, Lord, God, God spoken to that to me many times. And I said, okay, Lord, he said, no, no, no. I want you to pray until. And I said, okay, so what, what does that look like? He says, until you get a breakthrough. And, you know, immediately the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, what is the devil going to do with until? What can he do with the word until? Until, until means to pray up to the time of, before a specified time, to the point in time of, or to the extent that something happens onward until and, and incurs. Now I'm already screaming at y'all. <laughs> so, but God spoke that word until, until my, so my husband, I went downstairs and I said, we're, I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray until I see a breakthrough. And my husband says, well, how long are we going to fast? I'll, I'll fast with you and pray with you. I said, no, no, if you want to, that's, that's up to you, but I'm going to pray until, until I see a difference in my child. I'm going to, because I knew what praying until looked like because of my mom. My mom would literally go into her prayer closet. Mm. It was my dad and her and her, my dad's closet. She would go in, close the door and stay there until she knew that she knew that she knew down deep inside it was done. It was done. There may not be a, a ounce of anything that was seen because faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So she would pray until deep down, deep down, she knew that she knew it was done. It was done in the spirit realm. Yeah. Now it had to be connected in the natural realm. That's what happened. I just said, I'm going to pray until. And what's, what's the devil going to do with until? What is he going to do? Because I, this is something I believe you can wear the devil out with your tenacity to say, I'm not quitting. I'm not moving. I'm staying here on my post. I'm staying in this, in this, in this prayer uh, uh, movement. I'm staying in this prayer time and this prayer uh, 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 thing that God has spoken into my, into my heart. And I will not budge. I am staying here. James says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. It has wonderful results. The Bible says, James says in one translation. So if you stay there and you not give in, you tarry, Paul says, pray always. Let your prayers be in, be uh, always, let it be yes and amen. So we continue to bombard heaven with, I am not stopping. I am not quitting. I am staying until I see something break over this child. 
I love that. Pray until you get that breakthrough. Now, Judy, there may be some who are watching today who say, listen, I've prayed it. I've said the Hail Marys, you know, I, I've said our fathers so many times. I just can't pray enough. But you're not speaking to that. Would you share with us a couple different facets that you exposed to us through your book of what it is to pray until, what that looks like? You know, as I said earlier, Paul said, pray always without ceasing. And that doesn't mean in a posture of prayer with your hands folded on your knees mm -hmm. or even, you know, uh, at church. You know, we keep a prayer in our hearts. One of the, one of the greatest moments of, of this journey was on an airplane uh, 30,000 feet up in the air. And the spirit of prayer came on me. And and it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter anything. There's a prayer that is consistently going on where you are crying out to God. You may be looking at somebody as you're checking out in the, in the grocery line. You may be driving in your car. Prayer can happen at any time, at any moment with your in your heart, not uh, burst out in the middle of Walmart, but 30,000 feet in the air, I just put my coat over my head and me and the, and the Holy Spirit just had a great talk because the anxiety began to rise in me. And I'm like, this, this, can't, this can't come on me. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bombard heaven. I will not relent. I have a promise that if I ask, it will be given. If I seek, I will find, and if I knock and continually knock, that door will be open. You just can't quit. You just can't give up. You can't give in to the enemy because he'll take advantage of that. You've got to consistently pray and worship and 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 take communion and and give God, give give it to God every day, every hour, every minute of every day, and then watch God, and then sit back and watch God. Watch him as he, as he does it. I love that you made your prayer closet on that plane. That was one of my favorite stories in this book because it truly is, you, you meet God anywhere. And you pointed out in that story, Judy, that the anxiety was beginning to rise up in you. That even though you're this faith-filled pastor and this worship leader and this teacher, you too were struck by the overwhelmingness of the situation. You felt kind of like it was taking over. What would you say to that one today who is in that in-between? They see their desperate situation and they don't see the breakthrough. They feel like they've been praying for this for a long time. How would you stir their faith today? You know, Paul said that. I love that word to stir because you have to keep your faith stirred up. Here's what you have to know. Your enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He, wants not, he doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to destroy your family, your marriage, he wants to keep that prodigal away forever and into, into an eternity of hell. But what we've got to do is we have to keep our faith stirred. As I said earlier, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. It is the convincing proof. It is the, it is the convincing proof of things that you don't see. So you call into existence those things that be not as though they are. I, I knew that Kaylee had a uh, had a powerful anointing on her life. I knew that she was a worship leader. I knew she she got saved when at, when she was at five years old, and so uh, about ten years old she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's when that spirit of fear began to left her life. But we went through that for two years. We would not relent, and every single time it was worship, it was prayer. It was communion. Never underestimate the power of communion because Jesus says, as often as you do it, remember me. It was, it was, it was staying in that, in that attitude, in that posture of, I believe God. I will not give in to what I see because the things that are seen are temporary. The things that are not seen are the things that are eternal. That's what we got to keep our eyes on. We have to keep my eyes on that worship leader that is now dynamic, powerful. She is a, our powerful worship leader. She goes all over the world. She ministers. She teaches. She preaches. She's touching her generation with the power of prayer and the power of intercession. And, and so God, God always sees beyond. The devil wants us to see tunnel vision. But if you can see beyond what you're looking at, 
That is the key. That is the answer. Projecting into the beyond, seeing our future through the eyes of the God who, as you say over and over in your book, sees the beginning from the end. Oh, Judy, yes. if you could just look into the camera and right now pray for a mother, a father who is maybe believing for their prodigal to return home. Maybe they themselves are dealing with fear. If you could just declare a prayer over our viewers today, I think we all could use a little extra prayer. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. It is never too late. Amen. Don't listen to the enemy that says uh -huh. it's never going to happen. This is just the way it is. I declare to you today in the name of the Lord that there is power in your words. The Bible says that that power, that, 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 that life is in your words. The power of life and death is in the tongue. So today we speak life to your situation. We speak life to your spirit. We say the spirit of anxiety and fear over your house, over your marriage, over that child, over anything that you're going over, your finances, whatever you're facing. I declare that your spirit is being is being strengthened today. Your faith is coming alive. Your faith is being strengthened today by the power of the Holy Spirit who is there to lift you, to encourage you, to, to motivate you into prayer, to motivate you to a, a spirit of courage. The Bible says the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And I speak that boldness of faith over you. I speak the boldness of God over you and the authority of the spirit of the Lord over you that you will take, you will uh, get it back. You will retrieve it and you will overtake the enemy and you shall recover all in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus. Judy, this book is truly a tool in our arsenal and you need to get it. it again, it's Pray Until the Secret to Receiving your miracle. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your, your powerhouse revelation. And for really, I feel encouraging all of us to take another step in faith to see what God desires and designed for our life to come to fruition on this earth. Amen. And what an honor it is to be with you guys today. It's always great to be with Cornerstone. We love you. Thank you for this amazing opportunity. My heart and prayer is that you will be an overcomer today, today, and then tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Thank you so much. Amen. Stay with us as we go into a time of ministry and scripture right after this break. I love your Cornerstone Television t-shirt. Where'd you get it? I am so glad that you asked. You know, this is an exclusive offer for the month of June for you to receive this one-of-a-kind CTVN t-shirt. You can support and sport your favorite Christian television network this summer when you go to barbecues, hanging out with family, and having tons of fun. Oh man, that is so much fun. And speaking of Cornerstone Television, I love their programming, especially that Hope Today show. Yes, we love Hope Today and all of the programs. And you know, with your best gift, request your Cornerstone Television Network t-shirt when you give this month. We have sizes from extra small to 6XL. It is 100% cotton. It is quality and we want you to have this on you today. That's right. We have one for everyone and you get to represent the station you love with your own logo t-shirt. You'll enjoy this wearable reminder that hope happens here as together we spread the love of Jesus every day. You know, we cannot do it without you. When you give, you help us to impact Pittsburgh and beyond, reaching those of all nations and generations because we know people need to know the hope and the love of Jesus like never before. So why don't you give us a call at 888-665-4483 and request your very own Cornerstone TV t-shirt. That's right, you can also give online at ctvn.org slash donate. We would love to see you out in public somewhere wearing this t-shirt. Maybe we'll have ours on too. Thanks for supporting us. Well, what a powerful conversation we just had with Judy Jacobs about prayer and about praying until. And she quoted this verse, and we're going to quote it again and show it to you on the screen. James 5, 16. It's from the King James Version. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I love this scripture. 
And uh, as I always try to do, I'll put it in the context of what the scripture is talking about. And here it is in, in James chapter five. Um, he, he had just told everyone, you know, if you're sick, let the elders come and anoint you and, and uh, believe and your sins will be forgiven. Then he says this, this is right in the same verse. It says this, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And guys, I love that because it's in the context of, of humility. It's in this context of we're open with each other. We're being real. We're not hiding anything. We're not praying a flowery prayer because it sounds good. That's not effective fervent prayer. Fervent prayer is when you say, hey, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm struggling here. I've got a problem here. I've got an issue. I've got a need and I need God right now. You know, uh, Judy was sharing very clearly that it was, it was a problem. It was real. It was raw. And she was able to confess, you know, get people around her, get people praying, and we need to be open and humble like that too. And when we come from that place, do you realize that uh, Judy said that the devil doesn't know what to do with until. The devil doesn't know what to do with humility, okay? He doesn't understand it. It's not part of his vocabulary. But when a Christian is humble and prays and seeks God, confesses sins to one another, pray for one another, that's when there's effective, fervent prayer. You know, Tom, as you were talking, what's just been stirring up in my spirit, and I really feel like God is just speaking this right now, is that word fervent. It's just like yeah. staying in that place of that fervent prayer. And I don't know if you've ever been in a place, but it's just like it's in the innermost parts of your being, and you're looking to Adonai, you're looking to the Lord, and you are, it's just you and him in that direct line of communication. And I'm telling you, when there's this fervency in your spirit, that when you begin to see, like it doesn't matter what it looks like, but you said, you know what, my mind is gonna stay on you, Jesus, because you say that whose mind is stayed on you remains in perfect peace. And I feel like in this season that, you know, there are so many shakings, there's so many things that are happening. We see the wildfires, we see th what's happening in Philadelphia, Philadelphia road collapsing. All of these things are going on in our nation and in our world and in our families. And I just really believe in this season. I just really feel a stirring in my spirit that it is time for us to be fervent. It is time for us to know our authority and our position in the kingdom of God. God gave us a mouth that we can speak, that we can declare a thing, that we can say something. It will shall be established. And maybe today that you need to set up your post again. Maybe it's time for you to get on the wall again. Maybe the enemy has knocked you down and you feel like I can't pray and I'm tired and I'm growing weary, yes. but can we encourage you today to get back on your post, to begin to worship God and begin to praise God and begin to thank God and to begin to remember the things that he spoke to you, the promises that are over your house, the promises that are over your children, the promises that are over your family. Do not grow weary in well-doing because in due season, you shall reap a harvest. And we just declare and decree over today, it is harvest time for you to receive the promises of God, but it is time for us to push. It is time for us to pray until something happens and to bombard heaven. And let me tell you, I've been in places where I have bombarded heaven and I've seen breakthrough like never before. And I know my God is real. And we know that he is the same God for he does it for us. He's going to do it for you. So today, Will you just get on your post again? Will you just pray again? Will you just trust in God? He is not a man that he shall lie, nor a son of man that he should not repent. If he has not said it, will he not do it? Angela, what are your thoughts? I know you have a prayer closet and you love praying too. Girl, yes, I do. I love it and I get fired up by that. And a lot of times what I found is that when we feel like we're not feeling like Sydney, we, you know, and Judy goes into it in her book, when our emotions aren't there, when we feel like we've been overwhelmed by life and we just don't want to do anything, the enemy has come and he has already snatched our voice. In those moments, it's why watching things like this is so critical. It's why reading books like this, it's why getting in your word is so vital. Because when you look over history, when you read of somebody's testimony, it's there that it says right in Revelations that we're made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. Those testimonies come in like a flood and awaken us and cause us to remember who our God is. That we are not stuck in this temporal moment moment. We are not held back by the restrictions of this earthly realm, but we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, who is the resurrected King. He has conquered death and the grave and everything that is before you. He's already overcome. So today take heart, 
Find yourself in the word. Find yourself tuned into Cornerstone. Find yourself reading books like Judy Jacobs, Pray Until, that you yourself may stir your faith up, the most righteous, the most holy faith, that you will stand in the word and on the word of God that says, he is the one who makes me the deliverer. He is the one who's placed me as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Today is your day. Don't give up. Don't give in. God's got more for you. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to talk for a second to the about fervent. Yes. And I want to talk to the formerly fervent out there. The ones that you used to, man, you love the time with the Lord. You love that, that precious time. You love to go with the saints of God and praise God in the temple, as it were. You know, like David said that he did. And he said at one point, he was so crushed. He said, let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. And you feel like that right now. You feel like those bones, those spiritual bones have been broken by what you've gone through. Or maybe you've just let it drift. Maybe you've let your fervency go out to sea a little bit. God's calling you right now back to the fervency. We need that. I need that. I've been that person. I've been that person that let my fervency get out to sea sometimes. God is calling us that we would be the, the, that righteous man and woman of God, that righteous, fervent prayer. God wants you back in that place of fervency with him today. You know, Thomas, you're just saying, we just want to encourage you with this. You may be so downtrodden. You may be at the point where you're like, I don't even think I can go in and see the Lord again. I'm so heartbroken. I'm so discouraged. Can I encourage you with something? Crawl. To that place. There's been times in my life where I literally had to crawl into my prayer closet. There's been times when I've had to like in the middle of the night, I said, God, I'm just going to one more time. I'm just going to try this again. And I'm just going to seek you because you're all I have. And if that's you today, we want to encourage you that maybe you feel like the fire on your altar has burned out. But guess what? When you go back in, we trust and we believe the Holy Spirit is going to light you and set a fire in you and you're gonna to begin to burn with that fervency and that passion again. Have a great day, we love you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your home. Author and speaker Cheryl Sachs offers prophetic decrees and practical instructions for restoring the family altar in your home, which will help you to ignite the flames for revival. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.